one, I do want to take a moment for this. I think it's important. One of the things for, for businesses, so once you have more than a few fans, I don't know the number, maybe 25, uh, 25 fans. Once your business has more than 25 fans, you can get rid of the, <coughs> the ugly URL that Facebook gives you. And you can uh, have a username for your, uh, for your business. So um, right now, Ted, Ted, I arranged with Ted ahead of time. So right now, if Ted wanted to promote his Facebook page on his point of sale display, he'd either say, you know, find us at Ted Shewer Sport on Facebook, or he would type in this big, I believe, you know, try to, try to say, hey, remember this URL? It's pages slash e New Hampshire slash Ted Shoe. Um, once you have enough credibility, once you um, <coughs> have those fans, Facebook uh, judges you as, as credible, you can uh, set a username uh, for your page. And that's 25 fans or more? I think it's 25. It changes. When it first came out, it was uh, lower than that, um, uh, or higher than that, I think they just to restrict demand. To confuse things, you can also, on a, on a personal level, set your own username on a personal level. We're not talking personal today, but if you want to find me, I'm on Facebook at Mike. Um, so I can click this, set a username for your page, what page is that, that, that I happen to be admin of. So I'm an admin at Ted Shewer's, Ted Shewer's Sport. You can now set the, uh, the name to Ted Sports. Let's make sure it's spelled Ted Sports, just one S. Um, this is gonna be permanent. When, when you set this, it's, it's permanent for your business, so think a little bit about about what you want. Um, you can't reset it. You can delete your page and start again. So, um, are you sure that's what you want? Uh, from what I can tell, yeah. Oh, I'm going to pull up the email. I think. Yeah. Double check. But uh, we'll do that after the video. Uh, Maybe you should say no. Yeah. I'll do it afterwards. But, but the the concept is you can set your username. Uh, it'll check your avail it'll check the availability of that username. Uh, has anyone else used that? Make sure you have. You know, here's some more. Not change it and transfer it to somebody else. So uh, again, one of our one of the summer camp staff took Dakota, uh, which was drove us nuts. So he, he, for his personal page, he used Dakota. Uh, so we had to use Camp Dakota as our, our username there. Um, maybe you're playing that someone, you know, if you're Nike and someone has and someone with a Dakota, you might want to grab it back. But they do make sure. You know, but it's, I think it's an important step for businesses that want to use it in a business manner. It's the same as having your own domain versus, you know, back in the day where we had top.net.net slash business name. Okay, we've managed to get way behind. Yep. Your budget, uh, so let's talk. I definitely want yep. to work on the worksheet too. Yeah. So, so. yeah, so let's hit Facebook way quick, micro break. You get LinkedIn way quick? Yeah, that's what, yeah. What did I say? Yeah. yeah. How many folks have LinkedIn accounts? Many people. I think it's a. I think it's a real important uh, part of your personal online brand uh, to have uh, something on LinkedIn. Um, <clears throat> it's essentially like Facebook. It's a professional uh, networking spot. Rather than friends, you have colleagues. Um, it doesn't get into, you can't play Farmville uh, or Mobster Vendetta on, on Facebook. I mean, on, on LinkedIn, it's just a professional networking. Uh, for those of you in accounting architecture, I think that's a, a network where, where it may start, where it's really a little bit more about uh, you as a professional uh, person. Um, you put your, your resume, uh, your background, you can connect with people you've done business with. It's a very comfortable way for uh, people to get used to the, the social networking aspects of what, what social networking is really. A lot of people will start out with, with uh, LinkedIn, feel they're comfortable learn that, uh, that Facebook is in such a scary place. After all, particularly in small businesses, small small areas like we're in, I think you'll find that many, I, I didn't have time to look at, I was gonna try to compare my Facebook friends to my LinkedIn friends. Most, many of them are the same. That's the nature of a small, small town business, I think, is that the people we work with are people we're friends with as well. Um, Facebook, uh, sorry, LinkedIn, <coughs> You, know, you can use it to check on employees. You know, it's really huge, huge uh, play in, in the HR field. Um, we use it. You know, we get an RFP from from some random uh, organization we haven't heard from. We'll use it just to say, so is this person on LinkedIn? What, what's their background? How much do they know about this stuff? Um, 
<coughs> versus so, the very commercial website you can go to that you know they just spent hours, I mean, months figuring out every word and making sure it's right. This is a little bit more of a sort of today real nature. But it is much more, to jump in, it is much more, um, uh, you can sort of set it and forget it for a longer period of time. It's like updating your resume almost. Or you can use it, as Mike says, if you're a sole proprietor and professional, to really sort of prospect for people who would be connected to connected to connected who might give you recommendations. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Lots of, uh, lots of similarities. You can upload a photo. You can forward your, your connection. Again, I think for a lot of people it's about checking employees. Uh, here's, I got, I got the resume they sent me. Does it match what they said on LinkedIn? Um, I'm thinking about doing business with this person. Let me see what does he have, does he or she have uh, been recommended by anybody else? Um, your recommendations here, your recommendations that I do this. So think about it, net, networking, professional networking as we all sort of were taught to, to, look, to, to think about it. But in an online uh, context. Here's how uh, <coughs> this Mike's page, but notice how he, he's got it set up so when he tweeted, it automatically hit this. Right. It just came from Twitter, see? A lot of people keep, on a personal sort of level, a lot of people keep Twitter a little bit more on the professional side, Facebook on the personal side. So just recently, I think Ellie made reference to this. Twitter and LinkedIn made it possible so you can update your LinkedIn status, your Twitter status, uh, or vice versa. Um, I think it's good uh, for, for promoting your promoting yourself. Uh, you know, Rotor, you, you use the term brags, right? You put a dollar and you brag about I've got this award or something like that. I think uh, I think LinkedIn is a place where, on a professional level, you, you, you win a you win a job, you. Build a building. You, 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 you complete a capital campaign. You, you post it here. Your, your professional network will see it, and, and maybe there'll be some, some network effects uh, from that. Or just helps to go build your your brand, your personal brand, your reputation, uh, your trust. Mike, can I add a few things to that? Yeah, Ellie does. When I do my Google Analytics, I know I'm driving traffic to our website because it tells me what percent comes mm -hmm. off of this. Um, I have a company profile up here. Um, what are you working on? We had a virtual booth and our product listing with videos prior to going to our last exhibition. So everybody in the company put up, what are you working on? That link, it drove more traffic to our booth. And my favorite story about LinkedIn is uh, I was working with my booth selection. Um, and we were stuck in the South Hall all the way in the back. Not a good place to be. So the guy I'm talking to, we got chatting, and I said, Christian, are you on LinkedIn? And he said, no, but you know, Kim and Lonnie is getting ready to do this, and our vice president is doing a huge promotion next week. I said, cool, let me send you a link. We'll link up professionally. You get in there, you get your profile set up, and you're going to meet the VP and everybody else to it. Do you know where my booth was last month? <laughs> the minute you walked in to register, one booth, Logo pack. And I didn't pay anything extra for it. At 9:30 in the morning, in a 20 by 30 booth, you could not move. We were slammed. And that's because of the relationship you built. Absolutely. Know. And you know what? I talked to him yesterday about my Chicago booth. I think it's uh, Ellie mentions uh, the company profile. Um, uh, LinkedIn tries to do this automatically, right? Or did, no, and I you have the ability to, to, to you have to add it. Okay. I think the more, if a company has a lot of people, they'll, they'll start to pull some of this information uh, for you. But I think it's important for those of you with small or medium-sized businesses, um, think about what doing what, exactly what Ellie did, uh, create a, a page, the sort of the Facebook page for your business uh, on, on LinkedIn. This one could probably be a little bit more um, brochure-y, uh, you know, necessarily have to worry about the, the updates that you might not have Facebook. It does do, again, recruiters and stuff. It'll, it'll show anybody that's currently on LinkedIn that's associated with your company. Um, I think we, the difference here is that it's known to and people expect it to be more about business, so you can brag. There's still a social element, mm -hmm. but, but it's okay. It's sort of the politeness. Well, you also join groups when there are discussions. So suddenly you become the expert when you participate in that conversation. Yep. And I just find this invaluable because we're to be 
so I mean, I probably spent almost a half hour to 45 minutes a day just reading to see what else is going on. But look at look at the results I got at the last two exhibits and all the qualified leads. You know, just one lead off of this paid for the exhibition. I think we're going to need to stop here. Yeah. And, and, and uh, there are, on the back of that handout that we passed out here, the stuff we've talked about is in the chart. Those are the main ones right now. Now, there, there are also, for some places, the YouTube channel is going to make a lot of stuff. It probably does for you if you don't have one already. So you've got video content that, that, uh, uh, that uh, the ability to make video content, uh, then, then you can put up a YouTube channel. This is one that we actually did for very good. Yeah. Where you can brand it. This is YouTube. You better, you better look at YouTube because, but it is YouTube. Um, Here's their website. And you're able to sort of make their, their YouTube channel just on the same. Travel like a fun railroad trip. You can get vacation. So they can upload their photos, their fan photos, uh, all of the same same elements of social networks. Um, video, you know, say it, you know again. You're limited only to your creativity about how you do this. You could say, you know, Dean, you could be doing a little product reviews, put popping them up on your uh, YouTube channel, and using that as a way to, to talk about things. They're really, all these things are really only limited by your, your creativity uh, and what's going to work for, for your audience. And then blogging is another way. If you if you if you write, you become expert because you read to know what to write about. So and and you become perceived as an expert if you. If, if you write more, so and search engines love blogs, and so there are some. Uh, we've, we've given you a couple of uh, links on that back chart for some basic blog um, software. Some of the, the, the two most popular ones, WordPress and Blogger, probably that can easily. I mean, you can get through it and easily. Figure out how to set up a blog and, and have it uh, sort of embedded in or linked to your company website. Much, much deeper commitment than a Twitter. You know, 140 char characters on Twitter, well written, generally, you know, well written, expertise sort of driven uh, content. So it's going to work on a blog. So it's a real, there is a commitment. I think there's a commitment difference between uh, between the two. Now, is that WordPress driven? Or no, they built this into their website. Uh, and so it's not an external one, uh, but part of their web, their web content. And then the last thing on there, just real quickly, is. Uh, there are photo sharing sites out there that have become really social. We started out as just sites where they were trying to sell you uh, some prints that other people, uh, like if your daughter took pictures of you know, uh, a football game or something, and, and, and she, wanted, she was she she sent me a link. This is my personal story, and all of a sudden I was trying to be sold by these prints. But it be, but Flickr and uh, Google's Picasa are sites that have huge social network to them and they're, they're particularly good for businesses that have a creative product that they want to showcase and it's sort of static. It's a good way to show portfolios, get comments on them, sort of you know, people search for art photography if you're a photographer or portrait photography. You can get some business leads off of that and there's social network capabilities on those too. Okay, I want us to get to the worksheet thing. So take like a, a like let's keep this to like a three minute um, Bathroom break. Musical chairs. Can you hear the music go off? Come back in. 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 Come back YouTube and some of the highlights. Uh, what we thought we'd, we'd encourage you to do is uh, we, we pass out uh, a handout here and I'll get you one. Everybody have this worksheet plan? You don't have one. Uh, Jeff will help you. I stole Don's so I could read. What we want you to do is to uh, answer some questions uh, alone or with the people you came uh, came here with in your company today. Um, Chris, can you get some more? Sorry. Yeah. I've got one. I've got one here. I'll take this. Thank you, Bruce. Yeah. If you're uh, if you're with a person from your work, we can share. I know they're they're around here somewhere.
So we want you to, to take maybe five minutes to answer individually for your organization the questions and get together in small groups. Maybe each of the, the tables could find a way to, to arrange yourselves to chat. Um, so first question, uh, you know, in, your, in your business role, uh, what do you have to add to a, a conversation? So this is, we want you thinking about your expertise. Uh, what are you really good at? What do you have that's unique about your company or, or your role or, or your skills that you could sort of add to the conversation? So this is sort of trying to get at, um, you know, what is it worth it for you to, to, you know, you're all experts in some things. So we want you to think about what it is that, that you could add to a conversation. Why would somebody follow you on Twitter or want to be your colleague on Facebook? Um, so I want you to think about that for, for, for two minutes. Can, I, can we hang in here for a second? Yeah. Are there extras somewhere? Does, does everybody look around? Are there extras of the, of the worksheet? It's got the two logos in the top right corner. I have 50 copies of that right now. So you can run, we'll have your listener do something, we'll probably run some other okay. copies. I'm sorry my copy of maybe I ran out of paper or something. Uh, then based on based on what you learned today, um, is one or one or more of these social networks that you've heard about today, is it right for your business? Think about that for a little bit. Which ones and why? If 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 if, uh, if not, why not? Um, have some answer that and then discuss with your small groups. And then spend a little bit of time thinking about uh, what specific challenges do you need to overcome to be, be successful? And, and what are your ne next actions uh, to take once you get back to the office, assuming you're not taking the afternoon off uh, today? Um, so, um, <laughs> yeah. uh, so take a couple minutes to uh, work on that uh, individually. Um, I'll, uh, I'll sound, a, sound a bell or, or a whistle. Uh, and then we'd like you to talk, talk amongst your table groups to try to push each other here a little bit. I think, you know, I think oftentimes we need uh, we, we don't know what's interesting about the, uh, Joji's not here, about what the, the heating and oil business. Um, we, we get, I guess, so used to being in, in the web world, I don't know what might be interesting uh, to you. So, so use each other to, uh, to introduce yourselves about your business and find out what your colleagues might want to know about your business and what you could add to a conversation. We should Looks like some great uh, great conversations were being had. Uh, and uh, I, was able to, I was able to peek in on people seem to have understood some of the opportunities. That's fine. Were there any uh, in your large group or in your small groups, were there any uh, ahas or did any light bulbs go off today in general that you want to share with the group? Um, ideas you had and what you're going to do uh, when you get back to your offices uh, either this afternoon or very early next week. Of course. Um, I think just the most important thing is that anybody needs to take away from this is social marketing is only a part of your integrated marketing communication. So don't let this be the single, single way that you get out to the community or to your different friends. Other ideas, Tom? Mike, I, you know, I sort of intuitively knew this before, but you know, we talked about what kind of the pitfalls could be with this. But I look at this as every single opportunity we have, there's an opportunity we never had before. Because mm -hmm. I was always reaching out and trying to and, hope, and I didn't have a good way to measure it if I was really being successful. This is very measurable. Mm -hmm. This is very targeted. And, and I have the opportunity. You know, if someone is upset with our service, I want to know. And I want to be able to fix it. And I want them to walk away quietly. This is an opportunity. They're going to be saying it about me. I'd rather they say it in a place where I know right. they're saying it. Right. Or you can it. Yeah. So you guys are thinking about a Facebook uh, type stuff? Yeah. Anybody else? Um, with all this social um, marketing and social media, I was just having a conversation. It seems like the face-to-face -face part, you know, I, I'll just I'll make this a short, that is a society, you know. It seems like we'll lose, you know,
Just general. Not, yeah. We're not gonna. We, as humans, we we. We're not gonna like soft. We're not gonna just. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Stay in our cubicles, and, 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 and our friendships aren't gonna be just virtual. But there will be an aspect of, of connections that allow you to uh, connect with that high school roommate uh, across the country and see if she has some business for you, or, or uh, you know, all those things are. Yeah. They're opportunities more than they are liabilities. Were you able, were you able to take it from starting to art? So it's a medical product, art keating and, and Vermont, medical product that's largely a commodity, electrode, oh, am I saying this wrong? It's an electrode. Electrode that, you know, it's a commodity-based thing and the users of it don't have the purchasing power. They can recommend and they can sort of shove them. But it's large purchasing places, it's not the nurses that are doing it. So for him to be, he's like, how, do, how would I use this? Was anybody able to get to the conclusion that we came to talking about this where we don't want to talk about the product. The, the value you can bring is affinity with those nurses. So one of the things that they, that we came to in this case, is <coughs> that they have a uh, sort of a, a, pro, a specialist, a specialty in NICU, you know, preemie babies, product for preemie babies, and and there are all kinds of affinity groups among nurses. Where people love those babies and love what they do. It's in their heart. And for him to get on there, he he can't start a new community around it because they already are out there. But he can get on and post about them and have a Facebook profile and really get involved in those causes, which has to affect how the other nurses that are users of the products feel about him. And it has to sort of elevate his brand status in the market. He's not going to sell. He's not going to sell the little electro thing at all. He's going to make them understand that Vermed, the corporate $80 box, cares about these freebies too. Can you get to those sort of insights for what you bring back at it? You know, and, and Bill Stecker, who sells businesses, you can't, you can't on Facebook, if you try to sell, say, I can sell businesses all the time, if people aren't going to follow, they're not going to care, they're going to pick you off their list on Twitter. But if you can show, hey, I just read this interesting new article on how people are valuing businesses differently these days, this is really interesting. That's it. You know, was anybody other than those two things to try to able to get to a sort of an aha about about that about the value you provide? Because that's what we're trying to get you to think about. It, it, it's so similar to what salesmanship was like before Facebook and Twitter. A good salesman didn't sell his product; he sold himself. And then once that confidence was gained, and somebody enjoyed your company and whatever, and then someone would say, what are you doing here? Oh, I sell insurance. Oh, okay. And that was it. I mean, you never asked for the sale, you never sold your product, you sold yourself, you sold the company. It's similar. Yeah. And, that, and this is similar. I mean, from what you're saying, it's not, don't go on there and sell your product. Get their interest. You know, when you walk into a client's office and you look around and there's a picture of four sailboats, try to start talking about sailboats, you know, start talking about, you know what I mean? I mean, yeah. if you just get that rapport going, and then it all falls out the other ball. And this is just a different way of doing what has been traditional in another Did anybody else come up with a sort of a way, a different twist? What's the big, biggest challenges you think you're going to face? Besides uh, time. <laughs> <laughs> okay, second, pl second place on the list, what is it? Yeah. Right. So the hurdle that you're not you're a techie but not a writer and so you're not confident uh, in that? I can I could do it if I needed to, but um, as for responding to, to people's questions, I think it was patient relations and yep. kind of that's the department. Um, medical questions, you know, uh, it's, it's the, the enterprise. Team. You have a real. So it's one of the challenges. Who's my, who's going to really be responsible for that? Well, yes. Um, if we're staying on top of responding in a timely fashion, um, you know, who's the expert on this kind yeah. of coming into the entire institution? Hey, hey, it's funny. We do that when we do this for a couple of clients. For when we just started the smart program, we have a couple of clients who are doing this for. I don't know about the financial services, investment management industry, but I have. 
they have specialists that I can call when it comes up. And then I just got to listen. Okay, I get that. And then write it. Somebody actually doing it. So someone, one of the challenges is someone is a dead glare who's going to take responsibility for it and ask the questions of the people that, that have the real expertise. And yeah, you got to be able to write, but you got to be able to write like you can write to your best friend. I think it's also that large, when you're uh, one of the largest employers in Keynes, that's a much different, I think part of your challenge is how do I sell this in the organization, how do I get the right people across the organization to, to understand that. Yeah, I think Vision 2020 stuff is a no-brainer for some of this. Um, so I think there's some opportunities there. You, you, you find a way to have a small success. And uh, so aren't we using this for uh, the flu shot? Excellent. Thanks to Mike. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks.